I'm going to show you how to install Plex on a Rock 64 from Pine. And if you ask what is Plex, Plex is, well, just like your home personal private Netflix. And working with me today on this project is my Quaker Parakeet Pebbles. He's 20 years old, so if you hear him in the background, that's him. So it will have your movies, TV shows, seasons... You can go through them. You can click on, you know, a season and see all the, the uh, shows in that season. You can look at something that you've been playing. It'll remember where your last location was. And, okay, so here's the board. Now, I've added a fan, and I'm going to show you all of the pricing on that. So the tools that we're going to be using today are the Rock 64 from Pine. 4 gig Rock 64 6195. The power supply is 1199, and the cooling fans are 1288. The hard drive I'm using is a six terabyte drive for 129.99. So that all added together is 216.79. So let's get burning. So I'm just going to drop the micro SD card into my Mac and on Diet Pi, if you go down to downloads and if you scroll down to the bottom on the left, it's going to show you other device. Now that other device is for, if you read the fine print here, Debian installations that you can throw Diet Pi on and this is when you click through the script. I'm going to be doing this on the Debian desktop legacy kernel. So for that, the, to the software we're using is going to be the Pine software. You select Rock64, scroll all the way down to the bottom, browse image. Select the image as you drill down through the file selector, and there is the image that I'm going to be using. And click Flash, enter your password. That's the password if you're on a Mac, the password that can, uh, you use to log in with. And through the magic of editing, I am going to speed this up at 20 times the original speed. So you do not have to watch this going. And once it's done writing, it's going to validate. Once it's done validating, you can eject. You can just unplug it however you like to do. I'm going to be nice and click eject. Remove the SD card, remove the micro SD card, insert the micro SD card in, and plug the power in. I didn't show you that. Once it's booted, this is what you're going to see on the screen here. And what it's going to do is the password is 1234, root is the username, and then it's going to ask you to immediately change it. So uh, I only have two arms today, and sometimes it's tough balancing that. That's why you see multiple tries at the end once you're logged in. We're getting the terminal. Oh, okay. And now it's going to ask you to create a user. I'm creating a user of Richard. I'm going to select all of the defaults after I tilt the camera lower, which is really my cell phone on a selfie stick, held between my legs while I am sitting here. Okay. So I'm going to enter a password again. Enter it twice. Hopefully you get it correct both times. And then I'm just going to click through, hit enter, 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 select all the defaults, click Y, enter. And now it's going to see, this is the cool thing, the Armbian has a UI. And just from the UI, I'm going to bring up Terminal because that's where I play best. All right, as a normal user, I try ifconfig, but it doesn't work. So we do a sudo bash and ifconfig, and you can see both interfaces. I didn't price out that other interface, but I just wanted to show you that it did work with Armbian. It's not going to work with DietPy. Okay, so now we're on my Mac again, and we're getting, getting into the nitty-gritty here. I go to SSH in. I can't because that IP address already is in there. I edit the file and remove the entry, and then I'm able to SSH in. I'm copying and pasting that code, and that's going to update the repositories. And yes, I am running this super fast because this is a 14-minute video, and I don't want to take up any more of your time. So then the next block of commands, I'm going to drop in, and then you hit Enter. 
And now it's going to do the install of DietPy. And I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch. Oh, it's asking me, so in case I want to image this and distribute it, it's asking me for uh, what it was. And I did select uh, generic, the first entry, uh, for the type of Diet Pie install that I'm going to do, not the Rock 64. I had issues with that. Now, that could be this particular installation. So your mileage may vary, but I, the, I'm showing you what I know works and what I've figured out to work. And I hate to tell you how many hours it took to figure all of this out. All right. So some for some reason, my connection dropped and... Uh, I did a reboot again. I had to edit the host file for the entry. I'm logging in again. And when you log in with DietPy, your password and username, your new username is root and your password is DietPy. Okay. And again, I'm logging in. Now, this didn't go so smooth. All right, so first thing that you're going to need to do is go to Settings, set your locale. Mine is the United States, so I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to select Time Zone, because I noticed if you didn't do this and did the Plex install, you were going to have an issue. It, so now I'm setting Time Zone and setting for U.S. Eastern. And I'm going to set the keyboard layout. I'm using Logitech Wireless. You can use any keyboard you like. It probably would work with the generic. And after I select the keyboard, I'm just going to click through and select the defaults. And if you exit back out of config, And I'm just taking a look at the network here. And at this point, it's only seeing one NIC network interface. Or in the old days, it was a network interface card. So I'm going to exit out. I'm going to exit out again. And now I'm going to go to software. So here is where I'm going to be selecting Plex. And then sonar, radar, and transmission. So there's transmission and sonar and radar and I'm gonna select sync thing and NFS along with these items and unfortunately this has gone smoother when I wasn't recording so you're gonna see a couple of flaws here and how to recover from them Okay, and I select OpenSSH because then you can do SCP. Many of you people may not even care about that, but that's what I do. And I'm just taking a look at it again. And if you scroll down, select Install, Tab, OK, OK. And it's going to go about its merry way and do the install. And again, I'm speeding these things up about 20x just so you don't have to sit here way too long watching it. Okay, I had a problem here. I don't know if I lost network connectivity, but here I am. I'm going to be SSHing in again. And I think I lost network connectivity because um, the OpenSSH was installed. So again, I'm going to be deleting the entry that existed in the host uh, file there. 
and got to be logging in again and I accepted the RSA key. And we're logging back in again. I'm just checking if the software was there uh, that I selected and it was not. So basically we're going to be doing the same process again. And I got an error here. So it says D package space dash dash configure space dash A to correct the problem. So that is what I'm going to do when this stops. So I'm going to click OK here and let it continue. We're going to get that message a couple more times. And again, when I wasn't recording this, this went super smooth and I did not have these issues. But I guess it's good to show you when there are issues that occur so you know how to deal with them. So I'm going to take this moment to thank my patrons over at Patreon. So that's Andy Meows, John Hollinger, Umar Seer, Matt Champ, Token Linux Guy, and Ian Fox. If you guys want to support me, you can find me at patreon.com, and you can find me through my webpage at flyingrich.com. There's a link to Patreon, the podcast I do, and other social media. All right, so we're logging in again, and we're editing the file to remove the prior entry for the key and logging in. And we're going to take a look and see our software. And again, it's not there. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with this and why. Uh, I think it may be happening, like the connection may be dropping because I was changing the SSH. So I was setting for open SSH. kind of hung here for a while and uh, I logged directly into the terminal and did a ping and I got it. So again it's asking me to set up the locale and believe me it does work in the end and hopefully you don't have all of the same issues. So I set the locale, set the time zone, just check the keyboard here, and it looks like it remembered the settings, so I'm just going to accept all the defaults. Exit back out of the Diapi config. And it looks like we rebooted again. And okay, it looks like we're working. I'm just showing you USB devices, the modules loaded. And now let's go to Plex. So I type in the IP address of the Plex server, or I should say of the Rock 64 you just close that window there, give it a name, and since this is an example, it's my example rock 64. And we're going to add libraries. So we're going to add movies, and I already have stuff on this drive, and so it's your drive is going to be found under slash mount slash whatever the drive is and I selected movies now I'm going to select TV shows I'm just going to click uh, that UUID that's the drive and here are the movies let's see movies or is it shows okay so now what I'm going to be showing you is sonar and sonar allows you to download series and you gotta set up the connection and radar is exactly the same for and test everything before you save it, sorry. And Radar is going to be pretty much exactly the same. So I'm using as my downloading client, Transmission. Test it. Check the authentication. It's root in DietPy is the user and password since we set it up with DietPy. And now we're going to connect it up to the Plex server. So once something gets downloaded, it will then trigger the Plex server. Now I'm trying the local host address here. Um, so two, two reasons that didn't work. One, you've got to set up a username and password unless you enter IP addresses or networks. So that's the uh, Class C network slash 24, which is the net mask. And once I change it to the actual IP address as opposed to the loopback address, it works. I test it, save it. So that connection allows the Plex server to be contacted by sonar and sent basically a message to re-index so it shows the new shows populated. 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and like because those things are important. And ask any questions you have on the configuration and setup. I'm happy to help you.